Hi, and welcome to a crafty tea party and the beginning of my next series. Do we have any tea drinkers out there? I like any cup of tea, unless it's rooibos. But I'm more cranky when it comes to coffee, like a half bad cup of tea can be consumed, but a half bad cup of coffee is uh, poured down the drain. Anyway, I got this idea after ordering a tea set secondhand, and when it came it sounded like a big maraca, which is not good. Almost everything was crushed, to put it mildly. I got the shipping cost refunded, so I spent 10 cents on teacup shards. I decorated the only whole cup from the package with a huge ant, which my mom won in a Christmas present game. She doesn't even like ants, but she's a forever supporter of my creative madness. Thanks, mom. So I had shards from five cups and wanted to do some kintsugi, however the non-traditional way with glue and paint makes them toxic, you can't drink from them. So I decided to make what I now call teamans, starting with black tea. First I have to kintsugi these pieces into a proper cup. If you love puzzles and crafting, I highly recommend this. Mending broken things is so soothing. Sand the edges at an angle to later fill with gold paint. I used rather rough sandpaper and, of course, my Dremel for this. Then I glued the pieces together, creating bigger ones and drying them completely. It took some practice and patience. The excess glue I rubbed off with acetone and then I just let it dry before gluing the bigger chunks together. Considering it was my first time doing this, it looked rather cool. I loved the outcome. I used more acetone to rub off the excess glue with a q-tip. Then I tried mixing the same glue with acrylic paint and it did not work. As a chemistry teacher I should have known that from the start, but it was worth trying. I could still use the acrylic and paint the cracks with it. First very carefully, then uh, well, less carefully, hence the cotton pad with some acetone. It took care of the paint on the shiny parts. There we go, looks so pretty, it's a shame it can't be used as a cup. Since I would pour resin into it, I wanted to seal all the cracks, which I did with nail polish on the gold inside. Finally, it's time to make my first teaman. I used this knockoff doll with lost hands and bad hip joints. She doesn't have metal stamped on her neck and look at her knees. Bruh. Her arms were super bendable too, but I prefer using the doll since she'd make a really bad regular custom, so... Off with her head and let's not talk about the neck peg ever. I love that she has three sets of arms though. I cut her hair close to the scalp, which was easy because she didn't have much of it. Then I scraped out the rest with a flat screwdriver. The head was super soft. Cheap copies will never be as good as the original. Next I make an incision and take the hair out with pliers. Then I clean off the paint with 100% acetone. This face mold is so cool though. After a coat of MSC, I can start on the face up. I tried highlighting with pastels, but it all disappeared after another layer of MSC, so I gave up eventually and used my airbrush in the end to give her some blush. Look at the difference. Bam. Gone. So I focused on my watercolor pencils instead. The pupils are made like plus signs because, you know, why not? And I think all my teammates will have those. This one will have red eyes because of the contrast. Then I moved back and forth with a white and black pencil. And look what happened after the final MSE layer, send help! Thankfully it was the last layer and I could use Liquitex matte varnish with my airbrush instead of starting over. I also added blush with an the airbrush, then I painted the same pattern of Kintsugi on her face with my Colero paints. I wanted it to match the cup. Perfect. I also used some acrylics to bring out the face up. I redid this step five times because I hated it and my technique was off. Finally, I could add some Tamiya gloss varnish to her eyes and lips. Face up is finished. I don't know why this is so bright anyway. Next is leg day. I was debating if she would have legs or maybe a tail, but in the end I decided on the teamens emerging from the tea like the cup is bottomless. I still decided to make a dress so the skirt would float around in the resin. I couldn't make a pattern and do it properly though, because, you know, six arms complicates things, so instead I glued it all directly onto the body. First is a skirt, which was a piece of gathered fabric, then she got a collar. I tried placing her in the cup and decided to cut off a piece for it to fit better. For sleeves I sewed tubes with a piece of paper underneath for assistance, it helps a lot, especially when sewing small doll clothes. 
I used fabric glue to seal the edges to prevent them from fraying. Then I turned it right side out, dressed the arms and super glued the edges directly onto the body. Honestly, I had a rough concept of how she would look, but in the end she still looked different from the idea. I like working like that, the characters don't always become who I thought they would be. Anyway, back to gluing, I added stripes of fall leather for the bodies with super glue. Then I took a step back and decided to gather and glue the colors on the sleeves to make them poofier. The fall leather's underside is white fabric for some reason, so I went back with black paint and a q-tip to conceal it. Then I reattached the head and glued a decoration on the chest. I usually use acrylic yarn for the hair, but I'm using hair wefts brought from Wish for this series. I use fast drying glue and glue the wefts in rows. I have tried glue gun before, but it just turned messy and chunky, so I'm sticking to this even though it takes longer. While that dries, I made the horns on a scrap head by impaling it with a hot wire, hot gluing the base and then using epoxy clay to sculpt. After curing, I sand them, then paint them with the Army Painter acrylics. I got some gold leaf with a nail art package I bought and it's my latest favorite art supply. It's so easy and makes everything look so pretty. This doesn't mean that my glitter glue face is over though. I paint with some gloss varnish, add pieces, let that dry and then paint another layer of gloss varnish. Then I dry brush them with a lighter shade of brown before adding them to her head, trying out different positions and deciding on pointing them forward. I also found scrap horns from an earlier project that looked cool with them, so I added them too and this is the result. First I wanted to braid some of the hair, but it was so silky that it didn't turn out well. Plus I didn't have the patience, so instead I let it be like it was, super long and straight. Next I thought the blue flowers on the cup and saucer didn't match the characters, so I made 3D flowers out of paper clay using these stamp things. Then I added them to the blue flowers, let them dry and then painted them using my airbrush. Since it's paper clay they won't stick, which was fine since it's easier to paint them before attaching them, if that makes sense. While they dried I added some gold flakes where the leaves were. First I painted with gloss varnish that added the gold and finally sealed it with some more varnish, you know, just to be sure. The flowers have dried after 24 hours-ish and they are ready for some paint. I mix red and blue to get a darker shade of red. Finally, I sealed it with gloss varnish. It got some beads before I glued them onto the cup and saucer. I added a couple of metal pieces that matched the decoration on her chest, then I glued a piece of string for the teabag tag before hot gluing the doll at the bottom of the cup. I lifted the arms with hand so they wouldn't be trapped in the resin, then the other three I put down so they looked relaxed. Then I made a cup of tea. This is my favorite black tea, although it is mixed with green tea. This is probably the reason why it, you know, turns more amber than red. I mixed this resin and used different resin dyes to make it tea colored. Unfortunately, I didn't get the right color, I think, but it was okay since the skirt filled out and made it still look really cool. I used a toothpick and an embossing tool to erase some bubbles, then let it cure for 24 hours and added some final touches. She got a headpiece with some chains, this also hid the hairline on her forehead. I had some black resin butterflies lying around, so I gave them some gold flakes and added them to the cup, saucer and tea mun. I also added one of these metal corners things to the headpiece, they are so beautiful and very easy to bend. Finally, she got some nail polish before I fixed her teabag tag. It's made out of paper dyed with coffee and I hand painted some, well, random things on it. I named her Darjeeling, it kind of sounds like darling, I love that. 
And my first Timon is finished. I am so happy to make something out of things that I would have thrown away otherwise. It feels so wholesome to make art out of trash. Behold my press on nails by the way. I felt super fancy for a week there. I hate painting my nails because they always smudge and I mess up. But I like having them pretty so we reached a compromise, my nails and I. Next up in this series is green tea. There will most likely be some videos in between because of Pride Month and a secret project. So it will take some time, but I will make it worth the wait. So this is what I started with and this is the result. I love her. She's going to make a cool tea set with the rest of her family of teamans. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and uh, yeah, until next time. Bye.